Okay, is the recording set? It is. Well, welcome everyone to the uh, Wednesday night success partners training. Um, this is Annette Zobar from Plainfield, Illinois. I am a QuickBooks consultant and uh, for small businesses and I want to formally welcome you to this call. Uh, we all know that success begins with showing up and I commend you all for taking time to show up on this call. And I'm going to start this evening by saying our signature message. Uh, we all always start every uh, event with this. We are all part of a growing team of entrepreneurs with a shared mission to protect and empower 2 million new families and small businesses with Legal Shield's network of law firms and world-class identity services. What we do matters and we are looking for help. It's really important for all of us to memorize that and use it when it's appropriate, when we are talking to people. We can kind of personalize it for, for ourselves, but that's a really good uh, statement to be using for people. I'd now like to uh, introduce our speaker for this evening, an amazing lady. One of the great things about Legal Shield that I think is we get to meet so many really cool people that at least I never would have met before. And one of those is our speaker for tonight. Um, she's a speaker, a coach, an author, uh, many of us have read her book, uh, Nine Little Words to Change Your Results. Um, she started off in Legal Shield as a member, uh, signed up as an associate, thinking it would just enhance her business a little bit, and ended up falling in love with it and has developed a passion. She's reached the executive level, and um, she uh, actually recently returned from the Cabo trip, so uh, she's doing very well with Legal Shield. So here is Lynn Schusler williams Lynn, the call is yours. Thank you so much, Annette. Appreciate you so much. And, and what a great job you did uh, getting us all set and, and started here tonight. You know, uh, technology is our friend and we love it when it really <laughs> works. And so wonderful um, to be here with you all. You know, this is our Success Partners training call. And it's a two-part Zoom presentation. So our first part, and I'm bear with me while I share my screen. The first part of our um, presentation tonight is about new associates and how to get them started. And it is about, um, you know, it's for new associates, but it's also for all of us to have a review of how to get a new associate started. And so, you know, we have so many great resources as associates. And my favorite place to go to get a new associate started is the BeginTheAscent.com website. This is our team website, and we're so grateful to Mr. Timmer Halligan for being uh, the person who puts all this together for us. And as you can see there on the screen, and Annette, will you unmute and make sure my screen is coming through? Can you see it okay? Yes, I can see it. Great. Um, so uh, you'll see on this, the get started tab. And so that's where I am. I've clicked that get started tab and this is uh, the screen that it brings us to. And you see success starts here and countdown to Salt Lake City. That's our leadership conference that's coming up in exactly 56 days, nine hours, 25 minutes and 38 seconds. I love that. and. You just scroll down and you see congratulations on joining Legal Shield and Shield Nation. So Success Partners is the team all of us are a part of. And then Shield Nation is the larger team that Success Partners is a part of. And so, you know, just a great messaging here for the new associate. And, and for those of us who are bringing on new associates, which hopefully will be all of us, even if you're brand new, eventually and very soon, it'll be you. So understand that you can come here with your new associate. This is not about send your new associate to the website on their own and hope they make their way through it. This is about sit down with your new associate and bring them here and help them explore it. And the very first link that you'll see is the first word of the second paragraph, Shield Nation. And if you click there, it takes you to the Shield Nation website, which is a whole nother website filled with great resources. And so John and Darcy Hoffman are our leaders of Shield Nation. There's a paragraph there that introduces them. We want our new associates to have 
um, an understanding of where they fit in the organization. So it's great to go through that. And then, uh, you know, just touch these points. Success begins with showing up. They'll hear that a lot on this team. And we have a system that if you just show up to the system, if you show up to events, it will serve your business. So here we go with associate onboarding. So this takes us to the Legal Shield Fast Start Qualify Resources. So if you click on that big red button, this simply walks you through the five steps of starting, getting started right. And we're not going to go through all of those individually tonight because we have a lot to cover, but you can see that you can absolutely just walk through it. And there are links here for downloading LS Engage and downloading Prospect by Legal Shield and downloading the first steps document, which I'm going to click on that one so you can see. Again, it's this fabulous checklist that takes you through all the things you need to know about. You know, I love that step six is understanding three-way calls. You know, we, these are all things that as we start our business, we need to understand. We gotta be, have our membership, and then we're gonna get connected and use that membership. So important that we use our membership so we have our own stories to tell. And of course, our Sunday 19 call is a great place to learn stories and to find stories from other people. Well, even when you're an experienced associate, I use other people's stories all the time. I go to, we're gonna talk about networking tonight. I go to my networking events and my networking groups and they hear me talk all the time. So I go and tell a story that I heard on the Sunday team call. So we want our new associates to uh, use their membership we want them to make a list. Who do they have in their circle of influence? We want them to learn to make an invitation. You know, whether they're inviting to a Zoom presentation, whether they're inviting to a private business reception at their home or a social event like an LOJ social, or they're being uh, inviting to uh, um, watch a video, a PBO video, or watch a live business presentation like a briefing. All of those are things that we all need to learn how to invite to well. And so we work through that with our new associates. We go over the calendar and how to find live events, and we go over how to do three-way calls. So all of those are uh, important. And I'm going back, here's where we got that. We, that was under step three and we downloaded that first steps document. And then there's a fast start training. You know, new associates who go through fast start training in their first 45 days double the bonuses that they earn. So it's really important to explain all of that. And um, then there's a get started right video that they can watch as well. So I'm back on the Begin the Ascent website. This is that Fast Start Qualifier big red button we just went through where that, where that takes us. And then we come down and it says, if you have questions, you're not in this alone. I always point that out. And at, this is the point at which I usually do a three-way call with that new associate to at least two other people, maybe my sponsor or maybe someone else on uh, the success partners team who I think they have something in common with, but I want them to feel welcomed to the team. I want the new associate to understand that they're not in this alone and that there's a larger team and we support each other and get a feel for that amazing culture that we have. You know, in Shield Nation, in that wonderful little Shield the Nation book, we talk about our um, winning culture. And I, I think that we have something special there. And so I make sure at this point with the new associate, we talk about our win winning culture. And then here's just use your membership, print out your new associate welcome packet, do, do go to the getting started with Legal Shield, which we just did, get welcomed by the team with a minimum of three business partners. We just talked about that. Go to prospectbylegalshield.com. We go through all of these things with the new associates. So they're not out there by themselves trying to figure this out. We want them to set up a PCC or a PBR or both 
We want them to understand the 10 core commitments and plug into local events and get, um, go to the shieldnation.com website and take a look at the training and onboarding section there as well. And then I bring them down to this section of videos. These are incredible resources and I love how they're right here on the getting started page. You know, there's so many things a new associate could get distracted by. You know, lots and lots of learning materials. And the truth is we only need them to learn a couple of things at the very beginning. And that's how to invite and how to do a three-way call and, and the proper way to follow up with our help. And so these are videos that give them absolutely the greatest um, support. You know, it's Mr. Drennan's How to Make a List. It's Mr. Halligan Mastering the Art of Invitation and the Three-Way Call and, you know, just absolutely such uh, incredible videos and resources. And then um, some personal development in the audios, you know, uh, Mike Humes on the 10 core commitments and how to do an effective game plan and getting started right from Steve Melia. And then here's a video from uh, Mr. Halligan about getting them started right. And then I always come down to this bottom part. I want them to, if you click on Facebook, it takes you here to our Team Ascent Facebook group. We want to get them plugged in there shows them how to log into their back office. If they click on the orange button, it takes them here to our SoundCloud filled with incredible audio resources. So much great personal development here. Um, just uh, so many great resources and the same for YouTube. So that's our get started right um, information for our new associates. And now I'm going to take us over and we're going to start part two of our um, call. And this is a quick lesson on best practices for networking. Networking is something that we all do, no matter what you focus on in this business. You know, we network in, in our everyday lives, whether we know it or not. And so I call this presentation, it's one I created for my sales coaching business, and it's called Beyond Collecting Business Cards. <laughs> That's something that people say, I do all this networking, I have all these business cards, and I don't know what to do with them. I, I, I wish I had a nickel for every time I'd heard that. So this is seven principles for networking success that works. And a woman named Jane Howard said, call it a clan, call it a network, call it a tribe, call it a family, whatever you call it, whoever you are, you need one. And that's a picture of uh, me the night my book was launched with a, a small segment of the people who were there that were all part of my network who came together. And that's such a great example of why you need a network, because things happen in your business that you want to celebrate or whatever. And because you have a network, you have all these people to do it with you. So uh, networks can bring you all kinds of things. And networking can be all kinds of different ways. Let's talk about this for a minute. It can be online. It can be live and in person. It can be in the morning. It can be at lunch. It can be in the evening. You can do networking in a referral group. So let's talk about what a referral group is for a moment. A referral group is a networking group that exists for the sole purpose of the members bringing each other referrals for their business. So probably the most famous one of those is BNI, Business Networking International. Um, but there are many, many independent groups that are on a similar structure. There are many other groups that are also franchises like BNI. And they range from free to very expensive to be a member of. And so you have to explore referral groups very carefully, but usually a referral group will only have one person from each industry in the group because if it exists to give each other referrals, you don't want, for instance, two realtors in the group unless one is a residential realtor and one is a commercial realtor but it's very rare for a referral group to allow more than one person from the same industry. And so 
that there's a whole nother layer of how to navigate that, but just understanding what a referral group is. And then networking can happen at a networking event called an open mixer. Think cocktail party kind of um, setting where people are standing around uh, just chit chatting and getting to know each other. And um, networking can happen in a mastermind group. Sometimes mastermind groups of business people come together to help each other get better in their business. And although that's really the point, not networking, networking happens there too. Likewise, you might network in a hobby related group. I do a particular type of stitching. Um, and so I'm in groups with other people who do crafts and other people who do textile arts and things like that, that have nothing to do with networking, but I've definitely made great business connections in those groups while we're there doing the thing we have in common. Networking can happen in a, in a group that already exists. You can find a networking group or networking can happen in a group that you started. You know, so many times uh, I've started groups because I couldn't find exactly what I wanted. It could be in a group that has a fee to join or it can be in a group that's free. You can have networking happen as a member of a chamber of commerce or while you're volunteering for your favorite thing. Lots of great networking happens while you're volunteering. It can happen at ladies of justice events. And although networking often happens in big groups of people, it can also happen one-on-one -on -one at a coffee shop or one-on-one -on -one in line at the grocery store or one-on-one -on -one at a restaurant or one-on-one -on -one online. Like you can have a Zoom meeting one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, if you're not in the same place to meet at a coffee shop, you can meet online. Or it could happen, say, at a sporting event. But no matter where or how many people are involved, here are seven principles that are gonna help you make networking great. So the principles of networking are all about building a strategy that's filled with positive relationships and great results for your business. That's why you wanna network, right? So this first principle, the foundational principle of networking is be generous, right? Bob Berg, who is gonna be a speaker at our leadership conference at the, uh, in October in Salt Lake City, wrote a book called The Go-Giver. And that's because networking's fundamental principle is be generous. So think about, Oh, Keith Ferrazzi said, the currency of real networking is not greed, but generosity. You know, nothing turns people off faster than walking into a networking situation where people are obviously just trying to sell stuff. That is the biggest turnoff to networking that people talk about. So the currency of real networking is not greed, but generosity. So Here's the question, you know, my coaching clients know, I know Lee Perry can finish this sentence. <laughs> the quality of our lives and our businesses is directly related to the quality of the questions we learn to ask ourselves and what we do with the answers that we get. Well, this is one of those questions. So learn to ask yourself, how can I be generous? The foundational principle of networking. How can I be generous before during and after networking. So what in the world does that mean? Okay, so before you go networking, how can you be generous? Well, you can have an intention to show up with a generous heart. You can have an intention to say, I'm gonna go find some people to help today. You can go networking with an intention to show up and just be helpful at the event, right? So if you set these intentions before you go, right? And then what about just preparation? What about um, being generous in the way of, well, I'm gonna be organized, I'm gonna be early, I'm gonna be, you know, what are the things you could do in your behavior that will reflect being generous and thoughtful of the people you're going to network with? And then during the networking event, so say it's an open mixer event at the Chamber of Commerce, how are you going to be generous during the event? Well, 
you know, just look around for somebody who doesn't have anybody to talk to and go be, just walk up and introduce yourself. Good Lord, that you will be their best friend forever. Because if somebody's standing around, even if they're like me, a raging extrovert, we still get feeling awkward if we're standing in the corner, not knowing anybody and not knowing who to talk to next. Right. So if somebody walks up and sticks out their hand and says, Hey, I'm Lynn. I'm like so thrilled to talk to them. They've just been so nice to me. So just be nice to people, you know, look around and see uh, somebody who maybe doesn't have a drink in their hand or, um, you know, if you walk over and introduce yourself and talk to somebody, then go find someone else to introduce them to. <coughs> Just turn to the nearest person and say, oh, have you met Sally? Let me introduce you. Even if you don't know them, you can introduce them to someone. And then after networking, how are you generous? Well, you're generous by following up the way you said you would. You're generous by thinking of other people you could introduce them to. All of these are ways you can be generous before, during, and after networking. The number two principle is give yourself a job to do. So I learned this from a friend of mine who was a master networker. And I always thought she was just like me, you know, a talk to a fence post kind of gal and just really happy to go network. Turns out she was truly shy and an introvert and it was a stretch for her to go do all those networking events we'd done together. And she taught me how to help introverts learn to be great networkers. So she taught me this, give yourself a job to do. And this works for all of us, not just introverts. But if you're nervous about, say you're a member of the chamber and the chamber's doing a networking event, go to the person organizing it and say, would it be all right if I volunteered to help you at that event? I'd love to work the registration table and volunteer to be a helper, volunteer to work the registration table, because guess what the person working the registration table gets to do? Meet everybody who walks in. It's a great job. And then if you can't do that, if you're at an open mixer and you had nothing to do with organizing it, you can't actually volunteer, just pretend to volunteer. Just pretend you're the host. So give yourself a job to do. Okay, I'm the host. Well, if you're the host, you're not going to let anyone stand around with no one to talk to. That would be a terrible host. You're not going to let anyone, you know, be there without something to drink or, you know, just be the host. Be generous. Introduce people. Give yourself a job to do in your head and you'll be much more relaxed about being in a room full of people. The third principle is know who your ideal client is and where to find them. So if you're trying to talk to small business owners, then know where small business owners go in your town go to network. And then if you can't find them, you can't find where they gather together, then make a place for them to gather together. This is that idea of if you can't find the networking that you want, create it, right? So. Um, this is not so difficult for us as it is for people sometimes in other industries. But one time I joined a brand new industry and found out that my target clients didn't really network. They didn't go to chamber events. They, but what I found out was they had two conferences a year where they all got together and that's where they networked. So I met them there. You know, I love this Louise Hay quote. She's the mother of affirmation. Somewhere someone is looking for exactly what you have to offer. That kind of posture, that kind of knowing is wonderful. It's your job to make sure they can find you. The fourth principle is expect great things. Just expect networking to be fun. Expect it to have Every time you go out to network, expect that you're going to meet a bunch of great people and you're going to be excited about all the contacts you've made. Just expect great things. We all understand that it makes sense. Neuroscience has explained that part of our brain that filters all the information and it filters it based on what we give our attention and our awareness to. So, if we give our attention and our awareness to an expectation that things are always working out for me and I always meet great people when I'm out networking, guess what the brain is going to help us 
see and experience. So it makes sense to do that. Number five is follow up and follow through only every time. This is the biggest, this is where it all falls apart in networking for most people. Follow up and follow through every time. You know, those business cards, you've got to come up with a system for dealing with them, whatever that is for you. I use an app that I scan in the business cards and it loads them into my contacts so I don't have to type all that information on every one of them. Then I load them into my CRM, I load them into Prospect by Legal Shield, whatever it is for you, but keep track of them, follow up and follow through every time. Number six is so important. Find your networking buddies. So, and be generous with them. It says C number one, be generous with your networking buddies. You know, find somebody else who likes to go to the same kind of networking you do. And, and, you know, just be kind of accountability buddies, reach out to them and say, Hey, are you going tomorrow night or whatever? It'll make it easier for you. It'll make it easier for them, but then don't hang out with them when you're there. A real networking partner, is somebody that you go with and you can look across the room and say hi to them with, you know, just a hi. And then you know they're in the room. You can always use them to take somebody and introduce to them and they can do that with you, but you're not standing married at, you know, holding on to each other the whole time you're there networking. Number seven is let go of whatever scares you. So, Absolutely, 100%. There are a ton of people who are made nervous by networking. They think it's as bad as public speaking, but it is not. It is fun. Just let go of those ideas. Whatever your limiting beliefs are about you and networking, you know, I've got these nine little words you can put to work on that. So, up until now, I've been scared to go to networking events, but I'm willing to find a networking partner to focus on being generous. You know, just Put these to work and then commit to it no matter what. So every time we do that, every time we decide, we exercise our capacity to make a firm commitment without knowing exactly how it's going to unfold, we literally shift our success thermostat to a new setting and we create a new paradigm and your old operating system is upgraded and your limiting beliefs loosen their hold on you and you just start a whole new way of being. So that's the excitement of making a decision that you're gonna let networking have a new um, capacity in your business. So I encourage you all to make networking part of your activity plan for the month. When I do that, I, when I write out my plan for the month, I write out my goals and then I write out my activity plan of how I'm gonna get to those goals. And that always includes a list. I list my net, my weekly networking groups. I list the LOJ events I'm gonna do that month. I list any open mixer events that other organizations are putting on that I'm gonna go to. And then I know what I wanna get out of my networking, right? I have result goals. So um, if I'm gonna do two LOJ events in a month, I know exactly what I wanna get out of those in terms of new connections or, or um, new people to talk to. And so decide how many events are you gonna attend this month? How many new connections are, do you wanna get as a result? And then track your results. You can track them right on your calendar. You don't need some fancy tracking sheet, but there is one here that I adapted I, I had created it for coaches. And so I adapted it for us. Um, it's called the Networking Master Tracking Sheet for Success Partners. And I'll put a PDF of that sheet in the file section on the Team Ascent Facebook group. And you'll have that. But the idea is you write down the name of the event, the day or the date and time. Why do you wanna write that? Well, you wanna know did I go in June to that one? Did I go in July to that one? Was it a morning one, a lunch one, or an evening one? And here's why these details are important to track because then you're also gonna track how many new contacts you've got out of that event. And then six months from now, you can look back 
and say, well, look at that. Every time I went to a morning event, I seemed to do better. I got better contacts out of them. Or every time it was a luncheon, I got better contacts. And then there's a place to put notes. So it helps you evaluate how you're doing in networking and what works for you and what doesn't. It's a lot like the Wealth Builder tracking form for that Shield Nation provides for us to track our activities so we can look back and see what works and what doesn't. This allows us to look back at networking events and really see what's working and what doesn't. So just remember this when you go out networking, your smile is your logo, your personality is your business card, how you leave others feeling after having an experience with you becomes your trademark. You know, people don't remember um, anything but how you made them feel. So go out and be generous and, and whatever you do, as long as you're interacting with a, a good heart and a generous spirit, people are gonna be glad to see you coming. And I love this uh, quote from H. Jackson Brown Jr., the author of Life's Little Instruction Book. Opportunity dances with those already on the dance floor. If you're not out there on the dance floor, <laughs> opportunity doesn't have a chance to dance with you, right? Opportunity is going to go to somebody else who does show up to the networking events, who does show up with a generous spirit, who shows up and volunteers to help make it a better event. So get out there and do it. I'm so glad I got to talk with you guys tonight um, about our uh, networking. I'm so glad to, the Annette, thank you for hosting us. Everybody make it a great evening and bye-bye for now.